Hey, welcome to my full guide for Metal Gear 1 and 2. We'll be going through the full Platinum and all the achievements in this. I'm doing these two first and then later on we'll come to come back to Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 and 3. Um, but we're doing this one, then I'll be on to Alan Wake and then back onto this. So we've got to complete both games, Metal Gear 1 and 2, and then we have to read the screenplay. Which literally takes like 10 seconds, you, just, you can just scan through the pages quickly and the trophy will pop at the end of it. So yeah, we're gonna start with Metal Gear 1. Metal Gear 1 is the shorter of the two. Metal Gear 2 takes almost twice as long, but they're both relative, relatively quickly. Um, and this routine, I've, I've given credit to the speedrunners because I have been watching a few speedrunners and um, noting down much of the route from them. I've changed a few things to make it more accessible. And obviously I'll be explaining you as we go along. And of course, boss rush is needed for the platinum. So we'll be doing boss rush on the end of each of the main playthroughs. So we'll do Metal Gear 1, the story, then boss rush, then we'll do Metal Gear 2. So you want to choose easy, and that's the first trophy we'll get just for starting the game. Yeah, so make sure you choose easy, guys. I'm not sure entirely what the differences are, but yeah. And also, I've got a full text guide fleece, so you can either follow me in the video, or you can just go in the text guide and follow that guys and it's pretty well. I tell you exactly what exit to take, like top exit, left exit, pick up this item, use this to open this door. Quite easy to do. So to begin, you're gonna go up twice and then right. And you're gonna go in this middle truck and grab card one. You need key cards to open certain doors. And you're gonna go in the left truck and pick up the ration. You use these to heal with and you wanna keep exiting and going back in until you've got six. Yeah, in Metal Gear 1, all the items respawn just from leaving that room and going back in. But in Metal Gear 2, you have to, like, enter a loading area, a loading screen, and then go back for the items to respawn. But yeah, so you want to get 6. You can only hold 6 at the moment. But you see your life is half full. As you go up your class, your health, maximum health will increase and your storage capacity as well. So you can hold 6 rations. Later you'll be able to hold um, 12, then 18, then 24. So you're going to come up here next, so we went left from the truck, up twice, and you want to go in this door at the top, that's the elevator. Now you want to go up on this one, take the top exit. Now be careful with these elevators, some of them you can only go in one direction. So if you go in the wrong direction, you're not going to be able to get back down, you're either going to have to um, die or make your way back around to where you were. So once you get out, come down and enter the door on the left, and then the door on the bottom, you need key card 1 to open this door. Rescue the hostage. Now make sure you do not kill any hostages. If you shoot any with a weapon, or potentially punch them a few times, it might kill them. So be careful. In this room, there's gas. So what you want to do, you want to equip your rations. And if you, as long as you've got them equipped, you see them in the bottom right. Once your health gets knocked down zero, you'll use it automatically. And then once you come out this way, you're going to take that left bottom door. Left bottom door. You'll need key card one to unlock it. Yep, yeah, I actually forgot to mention this one on my guide, so um, I just had to check. Yeah, key card one, there'll be a hostage inside it. Yeah, whenever I talk about direction, by the way, if I say left, sort of like left top or right bottom, the first direction I mention is exactly what side of the screen that's on. And then the Direction I mentioned afterwards is where along that side. Yeah, come in here, guys, pick up plastic explosive times five. And then go out and come back in and pick up another five. You only need, I think you need five, but I like to just take a few extra just in case. Yeah, do not let that thing run over you, it'll be an instant death. And then once you've got ten plastic explosives, go right, go right again. No need to kill the enemies, just ignore them. Yeah, if you kill any hostages, it automatically knocks you down a rank, so you do not kill any. Yep, and then this door over here, you want key card 1 to open it. And inside, guys, you'll find card 2. So back outside afterwards, now going to enter that middle left door. You'll need key card 2 to unlock it. The speedrunners don't come in here, but it's a ration in here. So it's a good spot to refill your rations if you're low. So you can hold 6 all together, remember until you rank up. So just come inside and keep going back in until you've got max stock again. And you can refill your HP as well. 
You can use the rations from the inventory screen, or like I said, you can equip them in your slot in the bottom right, so you use them automatically. The only times you will not use them automatically is when you're in deep water. You can't heal up in deep water at all. But it just, it's not too much of a problem, that. So once you've got six rations and you're healed, come up here. It's going to heal through the electric floor, so just make sure your rations are equipped and you'll use them automatically. Up here, go in the door on the right. Yeah, this is key card level one. Yeah, key card level one and then rescue the hostage. Same exit. Then you're gonna go top right. And then left exit. And then the left door, guys. This will be key card two. And then this middle door. That will be key card two as well. And then store on the right. I believe that's key card one. So I've got my ration so ready. So I'm going to die in a second. Yeah, key card one. Come aside. And you got a grenade launcher. Beast of a weapon. It's a shame they don't do this in the um, solid games. You know, where you just enter, you leave a room, come back in, and all the items respawn. Yeah, so back out the bottom, go left, take the bottom right exit, and in here you want key card two. They've been hostage. Yeah, once you rescue so many hostages, that's how you rank up in Metal Gear 1. So that's why we're rescuing them. I need to be a certain rank to be able to receive messages from Jennifer as well. And you want max health anyway to get through the water later without having to use the um, underwater mask. Yeah, so back here guys and go in this elevator. Right, gonna take the bottom exit and you're gonna go into the middle, uh, sorry, right middle. Remember the first direction I mentioned is the side of the screen it's on. And then afterwards it's where on that side. So yeah, right middle, I'm going to take bottom exit here, watch your health, my health is slow, just be careful. Open that door with the key card level 2, and rescue the hostage inside. And there's no need to heal though then, because as you've seen, if you didn't go up a rank when you rescued him, then you've either missed a hostage, or you've killed one. You should have gone up to class 2 guys when you rescued him. Now your health is a bit higher now, and you can also hold more rations. Yeah, come this door next, key card one. Rescue that guy. Lots of hostages all scattered about. Yeah, then leave the hostage room, go down and go left, and you'll get captured in this next room. Yeah, so just come left until you get captured. It's inevitable. But it's alright, we wanted to get captured. Yeah, so you're going to punch a wall on the left. It's a very, very weak wall. Just punch it. There's no doors in there, so I don't know how they got you in there. Yeah, punch a wall, and you'll find this guy. Talk to him. That's it. Exhaust his dialogue, and then punch a wall in the bottom right. Yeah, that's Grey Fox. Once you've escaped, that's the shot maker. You don't have to kill him on the story, but you have to kill him in boss rush. Right, enter the door on the bottom right. You're just going to punch it. Grab your weapons, and come into your inventory, guys, and get rid of the transmitter. That'll make it so the enemies know where you are. And then open this door on the bottom left with key card two and pick up key card three and pick up that ammo. Now keep coming back in it, that's actually ammo for your grenade launcher. Keep coming back in and picking that up guys until you've got 60. I actually forgot to do it here. I actually got a bit confused so I was looking at my text guide. I was like, 60? You only get six. But you need to keep coming back in. Um, I do it in another spot anyway. But yeah, you wanna go out and come back in. So just you know what I'm doing. Go go back in. Grab the ammo. Exit. Go back in. And keep doing that guys until you've got 60 ammo. Or you can just do what I'm going to do in a second. So key card level 3. And you'll use plastic explosive on the wall here. Make sure you do it near that spot. That's it. You'll break it. And then you can go through. And take the right middle exit. Carry on. Just follow this path around now anti-clockwise. And then once you get to the end, bomb the wall on the left, in the middle. That's it, now come down here. Yeah, just look at my text guide. If you see me just pause for a moment, ever, I'm probably just having a look at my text guide. 
Because when I ran this, I was following my text guide. And I did notice a few typos along the way. But if you do use my text guide, guys, and you find any typos, let me know. I think I've got most of them, but, you know, I might have missed a few. Yeah, bomb the wall there. Take that exit, come down here. And go in this door, guys. You want key card level 3. Inside, you'll find the bomb blast suit. You actually need this to get onto the roof for some reason. Yeah, the, wo the roof is really windy, and if you don't wear that, it'll, you won't be able to progress because it'll just keep blowing you back near the door. So yeah, that's where the bomb blast suit comes in handy. So yeah, come back. I'm going to go back around now. Yep, just make your way back, guys. All the way back to where we first came in into a sort of massive-like, maze-like area. You know, I've quite enjoyed playing these, actually. Not so much this one, but when you play Metal Gear 2, you see exactly, you know, that was the basis for the Metal Gear Solid games. And I've never really played these before, if I'm honest. Yeah, so come up here, guys. Bomb that wall in the middle. And you'll find the enemy uniform. You'll need that for later to get past three enemies, otherwise the door will not open. Yeah, so bomb that wall, grab the enemy uniform, come back out, take a top exit, and you're going around the outside of this massive room now. You're going to enter the elevator. Yep, and you're going to take the right top exit. You're going to come in here, this sort of blue room. Just keep going down. Yeah, on my Metal Gear 2 text guide, I have I have been able to sort of divide certain parts, but in this game it's quite harder, it's just like one massive list. But yeah, Metal Gear 2, it's easier to see where the next part begins and whatnot. So yeah, down here. And you want to enter this door. Yeah, you might be getting low on rations, but we will be getting more soon. Yeah, open that door of keycard level 3, guys, and rescue the hostage. Right, once you've done so, come this door on the left. Keycard level 3 again. No need to kill him. Just go to the top to avoid him by getting behind. Fortunately, he can't turn around. Fortunately for him. Yeah, keycard level 1 to open the top door and grab the parachute. Once you've got it, come back down. Take the door on the right. And go right. If you die six times, by the way, you automatically get all your ammo refilled and your rations. Pretty crazy. Yeah, if you die six times. So if you do run out of ammo or rations for any reason, just die six times and you'll be restocked. Right, let's get a hostage. You'll need key card level one to open the door to his cell. Then keep going up. And once you get to the screen, you want to take the top right exit. Top right one. Yeah, as you can see, otherwise it's not going to let you reach this elevator. And then back in the elevator. I should have, I might, you know what I might do? I might divide everywhere by the elevators. Yeah, you want to take the very top exit. Yeah, I might divide it by elevators, if I'm honest. Right, this way you need bomb blast suit, guys. So make sure you equip it if you haven't already. The bomb blast suit. I had to make a little edit there because um, this way I got a bit lost because I realised I didn't have the grenade launcher ammo. But yeah, if you come all the way along here, you'll find a room, this room here, and it's got ammo inside for your grenade launcher. So if you don't have any ammo, just keep coming in here until you got 60. Yeah, you'll get six at a time, and being class two, yeah, you can hold 60. When you increase in class as well, it also increases the amount, not just the rations you can carry, but also the amount of ammo. So it's possible you could only carry 30 before of these, but now with class two, that's why we can hold um, 60. But yeah, just go out and keep coming back in until you've got 60. Shouldn't take you long. Like I say, this doesn't work on Metal Gear 2, unfortunately. You have to sort of get there from loading screens, and it just takes much longer. Right, so once you've got that, you're going to make your way along this bridge. Care if you don't fall off. I've not fell off before, but I assume it means your death. So yeah, once along there, go right, and you'll find a boss. The Hind D. And he's going to kill it with your grenade launcher. Stand here, and then his bullets will miss you. That's it. And he's going to take about 20 grenades from your grenade launcher. 
There you go. 20 grenades. Yep, and then equip your parachutes. And run off there, guys, and you'll automatically pull the cord and you'll parachute down. It's not a very big parachute, is it? I think your shoulders are wider. But yeah, that'll take you right down to the bottom. Amongst all these friendly dogs. You're going to say bottom exit and enter the truck on the right. Do not enter the truck on the left, guys. Because you get warped back to the start of the game. Yeah, grab that key card. We will be getting rations soon. So if you get no rations, don't worry. I think I just used my last one. You're actually going to go up a class in a second. Yeah, so get that key card level 4 from the truck. Go up, remember, do not enter the truck on the left. Come over here, guys. Use key card level 4. Rescue this hostage, and now you should be class 3. So you, you would have seen your health shoot up, and now you can also hold more ammo and more rations. Yeah, so enter this door next, and you want to go to this truck on the right. Yep, and there's going to be some mines inside. Yeah, you want to just get mines 20. So go in and out four times, three or four times, until you've got 20 mines. The speedrunners, they sort of glitch past a tank using the invincibility frames, but it can be a bit tricky to do, and if you mess it up, you get instant killed. So, we're just going to kill it, guys. You have to kill it on bo Big Boss Survival anyway, so it's good practice. Yeah, once you've got 20 mines, use key card level 4 to open that door, and also to open this door. Do not go in them two trucks, one of them warps you away, forget which one it is. Yeah, do not go in them. Right, you're going to get rations in a second. In this truck here, go up two screens and go in this truck. There you go, rations, guys. Now you should be able to hold 18. I'm only going to get 10, but if you want to get more, you can do so. So, yeah, I'm going to get 18. Uh, sorry, 10, but you can hold 18 right now. Because we're class 3, that'd be 6, 6, and 6. Yeah, so I'm going to get 10 once you've got them. Once you're happy with how many you've got. And we're going to go up twice, go up two screens, and there's going to be a tank... And we're going to kill that tank with 12 mines. I think it actually takes 11 mines to kill it. Um, but I always just kill it with 12. Because you can put 3 down at a time. So I normally just put down like 4 lots of 3. But yeah, I think it actually takes 11 if you want to get specific. But yeah, what speedruns will do, they'll get damaged by the tank's fire. So you flash invincible for like a few seconds. And then they quickly run past the tank while invincible. Because if you try and run past it when you're not invincible, you'll die. But yeah, we're just going to kill it, guys, normally. So what you're going to do, keep putting three mines in front of it. Like so, when it runs over it, yeah, it will take damage. Like I say, it will take 11 mines altogether. It's a bit random sometimes how far forward it moves. It will normally come to the edge of the wall. Sometimes it will just stop short, though, before it goes back. Like so. Yep, so that's nine, two more, and it should be dead. There we go, guys. So now you want to equip the enemy suit. Yep, make sure you equip the enemy suit. Do not forget to do that. And then go up two screens. And these enemies will be waiting for you. Because you're an enemy suit, they think you're one of them. And they'll open the door. Head inside and head into the water. And take this middle top, the top middle exit. Key card four, and be ready with your grenade launcher. Now, if this boss gets too close to you, then just go out, go out, and come back in. It will take, I think it takes eight. You know, you can normally lob six at it, and they might have to move back a bit and lob the other two. You know, as it's moving down towards you. But yeah, eight grenades will kill that. Eight grenades from a grenade launcher. Go up, go right, and down here. Watch out for that deep water. It will damage you without the mask. Right, down the bottom, go on the door on the left. That'll be key card, level 2. Inside you'll find the antenna. You need that antenna because um, there's some times when your radio will be jammed. Um, but that antenna allows you to still use your radio when it's in an area which jams it. That's why you need to pick it up. Right, once you've got it, come back out here. Take the top left exit, then the left exit. And we're going to go in the elevator. Yeah, I think when I publish a text portion, I'm going to separate the Metal Gear one by elevator travels. Because at the moment, it's just one massive sort of checklist of what to do. Yeah, I'm going to divide that by elevators. Right, 
you coming in come in here guys this room at the bottom key card level 2 rescue the hostage yeah then you're gonna go right yeah I think we took, we took the top exit and the right exit in the elevator didn't we you're then gonna come down twice and you're gonna take this middle door this should be key card level 2 Sorry, key card level four, I was wrong. Yeah, key card level four, guys, for that one. You'll find card level five there. And then go right. And then open this door with key card level five. And then enter the elevator. Right, you want to go down to the bottom exit. Yeah, it's the very bottom exit. Use key card five to open the bottom door here. Go outside and open this top door with key card five. Rescue this hostage. Come back out. And enter door on the left, guys, with key card five. Right, head up here. Go right and you need to be ready for your plastic explosive. There's gas in here, so watch your health. I almost died there. I just remembered to use my rations. I wasn't watching my HP. But yes, gas here. Yeah, blow up that wall with a plastic explosive. Come near and enter that door with keycard level one. Rescue this hostage. As long as you've got your rations equipped, I mean, you'll use them automatically. The thing is, you're changing items a lot because you have to use different keycards to open doors. Yeah, this door is keycard five. Do not rescue him. And you'll come this door on the left. Yeah, do not rescue that guy. You want card six over there. And then open this door, guys, with card six as well. Go on the door on the right. That'll be card six. And you're not going to kill this guy. He's going to go in the elevator behind him. Right, so once you're in the elevator... Yeah, you want to take the right top exit, right top exit. And then here, you want to take the bottom right, and then the right exit. In this room, you want to take bottom right exit. I think that's key card, I think it's five. Yeah, key card five. And then you want to take the middle door, the middle exit. Rescue the hostage. I think the next one puts us at class four, I believe. Yeah, going to, uh, back in the top right exit. Key card five. Right exit, key card five. And then the top left door. Yeah, that will be key card three. Now rescue this hostage. Yeah, that'll be class four, guys. So that's a maximum class you can reach. And they'll give you the code for Jennifer. You get full HP now, and you can also hold 24 rations now. So yeah, come out of the store, and then once you get back out here, you want to open your radio, and you want to tune in to 120.48. And that'll be Jennifer. And when you talk to her in certain rooms, she'll knock the door for you. And you need, to, like I said, I think you need to be class four. Well, to get a code anyway. But yeah, 120.48. And when you talk to her in this room, she actually unlocks that door on the right for you. The top right door. You can open that with card six. And well, she makes access possible. And inside is a rocket launcher. Right back out. Enter door on the left with card five. Bottom right door, with card five. And then the door on the right, well, the exit on the right. And then enter this door with card five. Now what we're going to do in this room guys, we're going to get killed six times, like I say, as I mentioned earlier. Because it will fill our rations and our ammo. Basically restock everything. So you're going to come out. It can be quite tight getting from that bottom, bottom exit all the way to the elevator without getting killed anyway. Because if you do not get in the elevator room, um, you'll get transported back to previous safe. Probably the last ele elevator ride. 
That's why you want to go in that elevator. The game always auto saves when you go in an elevator. So just make sure you go past that rolling pin, or whatever you want to call it, as soon as you can. Get past it and straighten the elevator. Do not go too far right because there's actually a massive hole down there. A massive hole will appear and kill you. But yeah, get in the elevator. And then all you keep doing, guys, just keep leaving the elevator. And as you can see, you'll get max ammo. And we've also got 24 rations now. Yeah, just for dying six times. Basically, this game's version of the little chicken out, I guess. And yeah, once you've done that, guys, so you died eight times, all your ammo is restocked. Bottom exit. Go left. And then the top exit, card 5. And they're going to use a rocket launcher to kill these enemies really quick. Yet yeah, you need to kill both of these to make a card appear. So kill the bottom one and then kill this one. Yep, yeah, you'll pick up card 7. Yep, and then take top exit using top right exit using card 2. And then take the bottom right, uh, right bottom. And you need to call Jennifer again here. Yeah, it took me a minute to work this out. I did know anyway, I just forgot about it. But yeah, you need to call Jennifer in this room. Yeah, so you don't need to actually dial it in again. You can just press down uh, to open all your people you've already spoken to. And you can just press X on it. That's it. Once you've spoken to her, this door will open. Come inside and get the compass. You need the compass in order to be able to get through the desert area. If you don't have the compass equipped, you'll just keep doing, sort of going around in a loop. But yeah, get a compass, come out, go back on the left bottom exit, and then the bottom right exit using card level 2, I think it was. Yep, then it's a bottom right exit, card 5. Yeah, then go through that door, that exit there. You got plenty of rations now. That should last you to the end of the game easy. So yeah, again, get to the elevator as soon as you can. You can just make it. That's it. Once you get into the elevator, you're gonna go on the right middle exit. Yeah. Then once you get here, open the bottom door with card five. Yeah. Careful of these holes. Try to take my path. Get yeah, open that door of card 5. Almost at the end, guys. Of Metal Gear 1, anyway. Yeah, so go up. And then middle, uh, sorry, right middle. And that water will damage you. Make sure you got full health when you come in here. Now, when you get here, come to the left. Make sure your health is full. That's it, and go. You can just make this if you've got full health and you're class 4. And you go to the left. You need to be to the left because, as you can see, the shallow bit starts quicker on the left than what it does on the right we'll see in a second and there you can just make it see so you can just make that so like I say if you've got full if you class four and you've got full health right so up here take the top right door that's card seven now try not to kill any of the hostages he's using them as a shield if you kill a hostage it's going to knock you down a level yeah kill him with just a few rockets and you'll get card 8. If you do kill the hostage, just let him kill you guys. And then just try again. I think you continue from here anyway. From near that trap room. Right, so again, back here. Make sure your health is full, guys. And then make a run for it. Or a swim. Go and paddle. And you can just make it. And again, before you move anywhere, heal up again. So it's deep water on the next screen. And you'll probably die straight away. So heal up. And then come into the screen. Otherwise you'll just die. And then once near. You want to take the left exit. And then top exit. Yeah that would be key card 7. And once you're in the desert guys. Equip the compass. And then just keep going up. Now scorpions can poison you if they touch you. If they do don't worry. You can just die. And um, you'll, re you'll respawn. And you won't be poisoned no more. I think I do actually die anyway. Yeah, you wanna once you get to the top, go into this door. You'll need keycard seven, you don't need the compass no more. Yeah, if you die here by the way, you'll respawn back at the entrance to this room. So I think I did die a few rooms from now and I respawned here. But yeah, put plastic explosive near that wall. And then in this room you want to go straight up and then left. Otherwise you're gonna fall down the hole. 
Yeah, and then sort of take a wide arc around that top hole. Yeah, so as soon as you come in, go straight up, and then go left along the middle off the rim to the far wall, and then just follow the door on the outer left wall, sort of clockwise to make your way to it. And then once in the elevator, guys, this pretty much takes you to the end of the game. Yeah, go all the way down to the bottom. You have no choice, really, anyway. Yep, yeah, there will be gas in a few rooms from now. So just make sure you're watching your health. Yeah, come all the way through here. And you want to take that top door. Yep, yeah, that's key card eight. Yeah, it's gas in this room, guys. So just make sure you're ready. And you want to bomb the top left wall. Yeah, so plastic explosive, put one down there. There you go. Watch out here, because there's going to be a hole in the middle. There it is. And you do not want to fall around it. So just go left to the left wall. And then make your way around. This one is key card one, I believe, for some reason. Yeah, I had to double check. I don't know why that's key card one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Keycard one. But this will take you to the boss in a second. You've got gas here. And there'll be a few mines around. So just make sure you've got your rations equipped. Yeah, so again, keycard one. Get through this electric floor. And here she is, Metal Gear. So um, damaging him can be a little bit awkward. You just want to keep putting bombs near his feet. Just one plastic explosive at a time, and I normally alternate feet and try to put it in sort of in the middle of his foot um, and as close as possible, kind of. And you keep running from left to right like this to avoid the lasers. If you just put one down and run a little bit, the laser will hit you. But if you keep running all the way across like so, you'll avoid the lasers and the bomb. Yeah, and just keep doing that, guys. It takes 20, I believe, to kill it. I'm sure, it's 20. But they need to damage it. I mean, as you can see in there, sometimes they just don't damage it. I'm not sure why it happens. Yeah, just keep alternating feet like so. And eventually, yep, yeah, you'll kill it and you'll get our trophy, guys. Ultimate weapon, no more. I don't know why all the trophies in this game are all at the end, pretty much. They're either at the very start of the game or at the very end. Yeah, so enter the door on the left next. Once it opens for you, equip your rocket launcher ready. And then we're going to kill Big Boss. He takes like a few rockets. That's all. But he'll also stay at the opposite side to you normally. So it's time your rockets, so they normally hit him as, a, as he pops out. Yeah, hopefully your timing is better than mine. Yeah, there you go. You'll get a trophy, guys. Supreme Commander. Right, take the top door and climb the far left ladder. And that's it. Metal Gear 1 completed. Yeah, like I say, Metal Gear 2 is probably like twice as long almost. We're going to do boss survival next. Very quick to do. Takes like a few minutes. So yeah, that's the ending, guys. Once you get to the top of the ladder. I'm just going to edit the ending out because you can't skip it. And it goes on for like about five or ten minutes. This one goes on 5 minutes, but Metal Gear 2 goes on for about 10 minutes. Yeah, so after the ending, you'll get a bit of dialogue, and um, then you'll get your end of results screen. So yep, all these different results. This all started back in Metal Gear 1. Yeah, you'll get a trophy, guys. No big deal for completing Metal Gear. You can make a save if you want a cleared save. And then, if you ever want to play it again, you can load up that cleared save, and then start a new game. And you'll have the infinite bandana. So now you're going to do boss survival. Make sure you choose easy. If you choose normal, then there's not many ration packs to collect. But on easy, there's sort of like a ration pack on each boss fight. So pick up the ammo and the um, missile. And then pick up the ration. And then switch to the SMG and just spam him like so. Kill dies mega quick. Right, so that's a shot maker. Then it's machine gun kit. So this guy will be the same again, going to grab the ammo, 
grab the missile, grab the Russian, right, switch your SMG and just kill him with a few bullets. Mega easy bosses these. Then it's Hindi, you know how to kill this guy, he's a guy the um, helicopter. It's not a guy, it's a machine. Yeah, so pick up grenade launcher, pick up the Russian, pick up all the ammo as you make your way around to where we killed it before. And just stand close to it outside of its line of fire. And then just bam, 20 grenades from your grenade launcher. Yep, that'll kill it. And then it's versus the tank. So you know how to kill a tank, we've already killed one. So exactly the same. Just grab your mines and put the mines down in front of him. You can't damage it any other way. I've tried using other weapons. They don't seem to work. I mean, plastic explosive might work, I don't know. But yeah, the mines do the trick. So yeah, 12, well, 11 mines in total. I've got all this in my text guide as well, you know, how to kill the bosses and all the ammo you can pick up in the boss area. Well, that should be, I think that's two. Luckily, they can't see the mines. Right, next boss is the Fire Trooper. Make it easy, so again, just going to use SMG. We're going to grab the ammo to begin with. Yeah, the I think it's the RC missiles. Yeah, pick up the ammo and the ration, and let's go and shoot him with the SMG. That SMG is like mega overpowered. Yeah, next up is Dirty Duck. So again, if you kill any hostages on this, it's automatically a game over. Yeah, grab the rations and the ammo. Stay away from the middle, because the trap will open up. Yeah, so I use the RC missile, and I just steer it into him, like so. It'll take like I think it's about three to kill him. Oh, four, sorry. Yeah, make sure you do not kill any hostages, guys, or it's a game over. That's why I use that weapon. It's kind of accurate. You don't have to go too close to him. And um, it kills him quick. So, Metal Gear next. You've just killed Metal Gear. So, um, you know how to kill it. Get the plastic explosives in the room. And like I say, it'll take about 20, so same as before. Just plant them near his feet. It doesn't matter if you use up all your stock, because once you've used up all your stock, they will all respawn, so don't worry about using them all up. Yeah, I know, because you only get 20, and he takes 20 to kill him. Yeah, don't worry guys, they will all respawn once you've used them all up. And then once you've killed him, it's going to be Big Boss. Again, just a few missiles. And then that's it, big boss survival on Metal Gear 1, and then on to Metal Gear 2. Yeah, you've got radar on Metal Gear 2, radar, enemy alertness status, and um, you can crawl. Yeah, it's more, I mean, this has sort of been the basis of Metal Gear 2, uh, and they've got Metal Gear 2 basis for Metal Gear Solid. But it shows you exactly where they got most of the sort of mechanics from, which are, you know, a main feature about the Metal Gear games. The solid ones. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to grab the rations, grab the ammo, and just kill him with the rocket launcher, guys. I have to pick him up. So, again, just like before, it'll take a few rockets to kill him. That's it, guys. Big boss survival done on Metal Gear 1. Yeah, we get our trophy, Outer Heaven Survivor. That took what, 3 minutes 6? The Metal Gear took the longest. Yeah, so I always, you can save that if you want to. Right, we're going to end game and then do Metal Gear 2 next. And then after this one, we'll get a platinum. So yeah, we're actually going to um, go back to the master menu and we're going to open the screenplay book. Then just keep pressing R1 to skip between pages. Skip through every page, like say L1 or R1, to skip through them. And then once you get through every page, you should pop the trophy. If a trophy don't pop, just press circle to go back to the menu and then open the screenplay book again and that should pop it. That's time it pops straight away for me, but other times on other accounts I've had to 
go back to main menu and then go back and then the trophy is popped. So yeah, Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake and start game guys. So again, you want to start game and pick EC. I'm not entirely sure of the differences, probably, I don't know, maybe less rations pick up, less ammo, more enemies. Just your usual sort of difficulty modifiers. But yeah, game start. And EC. This one's a bit different with how your rank works, but similar to the first one, if you die six times, yeah, right on time, start Metal Gear 2. Yeah, if you die six times, all your ammo and rations will be restocked. But it's actually three different types of rations in this one. Yeah, let me just um, open my Metal Gear 2 guide. Yeah, items in this, and as, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, go into that truck, guys, by the way, to get a ration. That's a B1 ration in there. Yeah, it's different, there's three different types of rations. And you actually need some of them for later to progress the story. Yeah, I tell you, so about halfway through the game, you're going to need a B2 ration. So if you get any B2 rations, try to make sure you always keep one. Um, you'll need B1 ration times three nearer the end and a B3 ration times one nearer the end. But the first one you're going to need, guys, is a B2 ration about halfway through the game. Like I say, you can just die six times to restock him. And you actually go up in rank on this by killing and killing the bosses. So it's not by rescuing hostages, it's actually by killing bosses. That's how your health bar will increase on this one. So yeah, right, you're going to come along here guys, crawl through the fence. Crawl through a gap in the fence. Yeah, now I've given you that little intro, we'll get onto the actual path. Yeah, go up, go right, and we're going to go in this truck and get the handgun. You're going to need it to kill the first boss. You have to kill all the bosses in this one it seems. And then go through that little crawl space at the top there once you've got the handgun from the truck. So crawl through the vents. Yep, and that's one of the loading screens. So that's how I've divided the sections in my text guide for this. So when there's a loading screen, more or less that means a different part of the guide. So it's a bit easier to sort of keep track of where you are. Right, once you get here, go right. Go down the steps and then take the left top exit. And then top exit behind the tanks. Go left and then go up the steps and go right. Follow this walkway around. Yep, and then take left exit guys. And then use that elevator. The ele elevators in this are a bit confusing. Because, um, yeah, come inside this elevator, guys, and hit the button on the right to head up to floor two. Yeah, because some elevators will only take you to certain floors, and, yeah, they get a bit confusing. But, yeah, once you come up, hit the button ready to call it back down. So, once you get back to it, hopefully it'll be there ready for you. Yeah, go in that door and get key card level one. Then come up, guys, and pick up this ration. That's ration B2. Remember, we need to save a B2 ration for later, about halfway through the game. Right, come back in the elevator. Hopefully it'll still be open, as long as you didn't take too long. Come inside, and then you want to go up to floor three. If anybody comes in with you, just punch him to death. Yeah, so you need a B2 ration for later. Right, exit the elevator. Yep, and then take the bottom exit using keycard one. Take the bottom left exit here. Go down guys, and then take the right top door. Keycard one. Now there's gas in this room, so be very quick. Go right, and then top left, and then open this door with keycard one. Now talk to this guy, this is gonna be first boss. This is Grey Fox. Oh, sorry, not Grey Fox, Black Ninja. So if you come down the bottom, he should stay in the middle. And then just shoot him, guys. Don't spam like I am, because as you see, when you hit him, he's actually invincible for a few seconds. And your bullets will just go through him. So you normally want to hit him, 
and then wait a few seconds before you try and shoot him again. Otherwise you're going to waste so much ammo like I did. And once you killed him, you'll get all your life back. you actually go up a bit of a rank. Yeah, you'll get your life bar will increase. And you'll get card level 2. Just got to go and pick it up. Yes, yeah, go and pick up card level 2. Now, speedrunners don't do what we're going to do now, but they don't get a gas mask. We're going to get it just because it, it does come in useful quite a bit. So, open this top door with card 2, and it's literally just here. And then open this door with card 1. Come inside and grab the gas mask. So, that doesn't that doesn't completely eliminate um, gas effects, but it, may, it slows it down and increases your oxygen gauge. So, you open this door with gas 1. And you'll see when I equip this, you see your gauge is much bigger now and it actually much slower. Yeah, come in here, open this door with card one. Top right exit, guys, and then the top door. Key card level one. And then we'll go in the elevator on the right. Right, and we'll go down all the way down to floor one. So punch it twice, the left button. The left buttons always go down, so it'll go down or into the basement. And then up, obviously on the right, to so go up. To leave the basement or to go into high floor. Right, take the right exit. Then go down. Go down the steps here, and then go down and then left. Head up and then take that outer top exit on the outside. And then open this door with key card level 2. Now we've got to follow an enemy soon, but if you're alerted, you'll not be able to. So you need to wait for the alert status to disappear. So just hide or go on the next screen and then hide somewhere. But yeah, if you just hide in front of their eyes, they'll know you're there. So you normally have to change screen and then sort of hide. Or you can just do this, guys. If you go into transition like so, that will de-aggro all the enemies, pretty much. Right, and once you're in this area and the enemies are not alerted, you'll see that enemy flashing. Can you see him? This green here. He's a green beret. Yes, yeah, so you need to follow him, but do not let him see you. So stay behind him. He'll follow you. He'll head into here. Like I say, he'll be in one of them two rooms patrolling around him um, when you're not alerted. And through here, basically do not stand behind him. Always wait for him to get around the corner and then move. Because he'll do that. He'll, he'll go right to the end, then turn around. So never stand in a straight line behind him. Always in a sort of like a line of sight if he was to turn around. Always make sure you're around a corner from him. And this takes about five minutes, literally, to follow him through the jungle. But yes, yeah, you can't really go wrong, guy. Like I say, just stay out of his line of sight. He'll take the left exit here. He's just taking the long way round. This security guard is very thorough. He checks every nook and cranny. Except for where he's already been. Yeah, so follow him over there into this part of the jungle. Yep, yeah, he's taken a long way round again. Just watch out for any monkeys, don't pickpocket you for your key cards or anything yeah he's going to take the bottom exit yeah mega slow he's going to do another lap here he's going to go all the way around again he does get a bit quicker on the second lap so yeah he's going to take the right exit He's really taking his time, isn't he, on his patrol? <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, when you come back in here, do not go forward. She's going to turn around like so. Yeah, carefully do not walk forward too many steps. As soon as the screen transitions, just stop. Stay still. Yeah, when he sprints ahead, do not be tempted to sprint after him. He's just baiting you. Do not take the bait. Oh no, he's running away. you got to catch him. No, don't fall for it. Right, yeah, top exit again. I mean, he can't really go anywhere else. Then he's going to take left exit. And then he's finally going to take you up to a secret hideout. Yeah, he's going to take the top middle exit here. The trees are taller than they look. Yep, wait there because he will turn around and they'll sprint for it. And then once it, once he goes to the top, that's it. You've done it, guys. Finally. And there we go. So, top door, key card level two. Head inside. And then call this frequency 140.82. You normally need the tap code to figure that out. You know, so I could tap in when you come in here. But yeah, it's 140.82. Call that and talk to Dr. Madner. This is all needed to, to like progress the story. Yeah, then you can exit. And then take the bottom exit again in the jungle. Take the right exit here. Again, and then take the top exit. Now in this room, you want to crouch. If you're not crouch, you'll not get any mines. And you'll hear like little collection prompts, like little audio cues. You want to keep crawling around until you've got four mines. They're always in the same place. So you want to try and crawl where I'm crawling. You can get five. Yeah, just crawl around until you get five mines. They're normally in that bottom part somewhere. And once you've got five mines, come along here. Now this bit's a tri bit tricky. There's an invisible path which you can take to get across the swamp. It's always the same path. So try to go on the path that I'm taking. If you fall in, just go back to the direct... Go in the opposite direction from where you fell in from. Otherwise... If you're in this, if you're actually in the swamp for too long, you would die. So since you fall in, for example, if you run left and fall in, then quickly run right to get out. You want to get out as soon as possible, so just run in the opposite direction. Yeah, carefully follow my path. I know it's a little bit messy. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I guess you could find some type of goggles or something which let you see the path. But yeah, it's the other room where it gets messy with this little kid. Yeah, do not kill any... I, I think you might be able to kill these. But do not kill them. It might mess something up. Yes, yeah, so you've got to get out there onto the land. And then once you're on land, you can actually go back in again. And just try and find the spot. There it is. Almost. Yeah, a bit messy. It is that top path I'd already taken. Oh, here we go. I think this is it. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, I need to go right a little bit more. And then go up and then left and then right around the corner. And you reach his house. Key card two to open it. Head inside, guys. And you want key card one to open this door. Right, you got a boss fight. This is the running man. And we're literally going to make him run into our minds. If he called the crawling man, the mines probably wouldn't have worked. But because he's a running man, they actually come in really useful in this fight. So yeah, once you get control back, he'll do two laps to show you how fast he is. But what will happen, he'll always switch rooms, like normally a few rooms away from you. Depending on what room you're in, he'll like switch rooms. So you normally put 
You're going to put four mines down here. So you place four mines down there. And then come up. Equip your gas mask, by the way. Because you start taking gas damage. And then come in here and keep switching rooms. You can see him on the bottom. He's running into your mines. That's it. When he's run into all four, he'll be dead. And the gas effects will dissipate. And come to find him. He's falling over. He's not running no more. And he'll just instantly explode out of nothing. And he'll drop a key card. Card level three. Right, so back out this door. Card level one. This door here, guys. Card level two. Now we've got to go all the way back along the swamp. So hopefully now we sort of remember the route. Yeah, I think I do get I do get back a lot easier. Did it fall in then? I think I've fallen a few times here. Almost there. Just just a few more screens, guys. We don't have to do this again. It's just this part in the game you have to do this. No more swamp clearing. Don't worry. These last two rooms are a bit simpler. It's more, more like straight paths. Not too many bends. And there we go. With, we are through the bog, guys. Now we are now on dry land. Right, so once you're back in here, yeah, you want to take the left bottom exit, then the left exit, and then go down twice, and then back into the previous area. Yep, so once you're in here, guys, you want to take that door on the bottom. So you're going to go up the steps on the left. That's card four, card level four, I believe. Uh, sorry, card three. Right in here, you want to take the um, bottom right exit. You want to crawl beneath that little crawl space. Yes, come all the way down here. We'll come this way just because it makes it easier to avoid the enemies. Yeah, open that bottom left door. The Sorry, left bottom door. That's card three, and inside will be a Stinger Missile. You need that to kill the next boss, which is a Hilo again. Yep, so now take the top left exit times two. And then go back in that door, guys. Remember card level three to open it. Back down the steps. And we're going to go back up, back into the jungle. Right, top exit. And then the right exit. Yeah, then right top. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go across a minefield. Yeah, so there'll be a few mines near the bottom. Yeah, I'll just pick one of them. And then here, there's one in between here. And there's one in between here as well. And now there shouldn't be any more now. Then in this room, you want to go in that truck on the right. I believe it's got a rash. Is it a ration inside there? Yeah, you got ration in there, guys. I think that's a B3 unit. And then take the top few exits. Yeah, that's a B3 ration. Yes, yeah, so this is the next boss, guys. Hind D. So you got to kill it with a stinging missile. So as soon as you get control back, we're going to go right and then we're going to use it. It'll take three direct hits to kill it but they need to land there will be more ammo in the area if you need it I believe well you've got six bullet you've got six rockets anyway if there's not no am more ammo it'll take three direct hits you're gonna make sure you see your crosshair when you're using it it needs to be inside it when the rocket sort of lands so you need time your rocket will shoot up and then it will land you just need to time it so the helicopter is inside 
the actual circle within the target reticle. Not a smaller circle, I mean a sort of bigger one. And then he'll hit him, as long as he's sort of flown into it. You know, come in here guys, grab a cardboard box. Right, and then you need to make sure the enemies are not aggroed. You want to open your transceiver and talk to the colonel on 140.85. Like I say, you need to make sure the enemies are not alerted. You get the cardboard box and they come in this area, you talk to the colonel and it normally triggers that conveyor belt. But if the enemies are aware of you, um, it will not work. So yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, as long as you hide and the enemies don't see you hide, you can normally stay there to um, leave alert status. You'll see the conveyor belt, which just it'll magically start working. Once they leave the area. Yep, there you go. So all you want to do, equip the cardboard box and walk onto it. And you get transported into the warehouse. Right, so once inside. Remember, we're going to need a B2 ration soon. Yeah, you can go in this crawl space, you'll find a B2 ration in there. And you'll open your receiver and you want to talk to Holly. That's 140.15. You open your receiver in this room to talk with her. She'll tell you that she's in trouble. Right, go top left and then left. Left again. And then it's a bottom left. Go all the way around here, anti-clockwise, the outer path. And eventually you take to this elevator. You're going to punch a switch and uh, go inside it. And you're going to take us down to floor B2. So you yeah, basement 2, so ride it downwards. Uh, sorry, B1, sorry. Yeah, then you want to come down and go in this door. You'll need key card level 3 to open it and grab both packs of plastic explosive. That'll give you 10. So yeah, take both ammo dumps of them to get a 10. Go left and then come in this top door here. Uh, sorry, not in the top door, but go right and you want to go in this door with card 1. And then once in here, you want to blow the wall on the right with a plastic explosive. If you change it to switch, you put it down and you press circle to make it explode. Yeah, or timer, it'll just explode after a short time. Come inside guys and talk to Holly. Do your best to chat her up. And she'll give you card 4. To access a private quarters layer. Yeah, then go back out. And then back out through here. Go down and then you're going to go take the bottom left exit and once you go in this deep water you'll start losing your oxygen but you'll go mega quick. Just hold down to get to the bottom as soon as you can. It's nine screens and then once at the bottom go right and you're going to slowly move right the current is going to take you. So you're going to make sure you go up so you get near this path and so you can go up through here otherwise you're going to have to go all the way around again. So yeah go up twice along this sort of small path passage along the sewer dump. If the guards can't see you, they will definitely smell you. Yeah, come in this door guys, and that should be card number four. Yeah, then open this elevator. And we'll take that one to be one. Yeah, so once you're in B1, you want to take the bottom door. That'll be card 2. And you want to take this middle right door. That'll be card 4. And inside, you're going to find three stacks of ammo. Each of them will give you 50 handgun ammo. 
so you have 150 extra. We're going to be using our handgun a little bit later. So I just grab that ammo there, so you got it already. And come over here into this next room on the go in the next room on the right and open the door on the right with keycard four and grab the two stacks of grenades there. Each stack will give you 15, so I'll give you 30 grenades. And then go left again and then back in this top door with card two. Back in the elevator. And you're going to take it back, back um, to B2, guys. Yeah, back down to B2. And then take a top door. That will be C, C4, card 4. Yeah, you've dried off, so we're going to go and get ourselves wet again. Yeah, so back and sewer in the middle. And follow it left and then down twice. Once here, go right, watch out for the mines. Yeah, once you get all the way right, go in the dark water, um, dark water, the deep water. And it'll shoot you up nine screens to the top very quickly. Mega strong current in that. Right, and once inside, and at the top, go left. And then we're going to take the left top exit to avoid the mines. And they've got them steps there. Go the steps, take the top exit. No, wrong way. Yeah, top exit and use the elevator. Yeah, the elevator, you want to ride it to 01. Yeah, floor 01, guys. So, take it up. Right, so left exit, and then the bottom exit. And then just keep following this path around. We'll be able to find a B3 ration in a second, which will be hidden. Yeah, keep going around, and here, Yep, in that little crawl space, guys, is a B3 ration. So head inside to find it. Right, come out and then take the top, the right top exit. And then go in this elevator. And you're going to use this, and it's going to take you all the way up to floor 30. Yeah, most of the elevators, they just move you up or down one floor, but there's some which will go up like a massive amount of floors. We'll be finding a boss in a second called Red Blaster. It's quite an easy boss, he's, he's on the ceiling above you. On the top of the wall. Um, but you just kill him by lobbing a grenade slightly in front of him as he's moving and it will move into the path when it lands and explodes. Yeah, not too bad, he takes about 15 grenades altogether. And you'll get all your health back afterwards. Because your health will rank up slightly. Yeah, these white lasers, I'm not quite sure what they are, but you just break them by running into them. I'm not too sure what type of security deterrent they're supposed to be. But yeah, you just run into them to break them. Yeah, so as you can see, just lob a grenade at him. Watch out for that hole that opens up. Be very careful you don't fall down there. It'll be an instant death. Yeah, like I say, about 15 grenades. Just lob them where he's going to be, not where he is. Yeah, where he's going to be. And then once you killed him, you go up a class and we'll take the bottom exit times two. Yep, so he's not too tricky, is he? That hole, you can just get past it if you squeeze against the wall as you go past. So yeah, bottom exit. Now we're going to take this all the way around to floor 31. We'll take you to a blocked wall. This way you need your B2 ration, by the way. Yeah, this way you need it. If you don't need it, you can either die six times to refill your rations or go and find one elsewhere. If you go in that previous room and just keep dropping down the hole, that will kill you. You could just do that, I guess. Right, come in here, but you might want to just go in the elevator before. You, if you had to do so, go in the elevator first, then come back out, you know, just so it saves the game. Yeah, so this bird, equip your B2 ration. 
and eventually he should settle. You might need to follow him for a moment. Yeah, equip your B2 ration and he'll eventually settle down. And then because he got a ration equipped and he, he really likes one of the um, products inside it. I forget which one it is now. Is it meatballs or something? Yeah. Equip B2 ration and you can talk to the birds and you'll find a little message on it. And then you're going to tune in guys to 140.51. Which will be Gustava. But fortunately, you don't understand the language. Uh, sorry, Marv, sorry. Yeah, it's Marv. Yeah, so 140.51, that would be Marv. And then we're going to press down and talk to Dr. Madner. You need to do this to progress the story. Yeah, so talk to Dr. Madner, guys. And that's all we needed to see. Right, so take the bottom exit, go back down the stairs, down to floor 30. Use the elevator and you want to take it to floor 01. Yes, take it down, just go down and it will take you automatically to floor 1. Yeah, once you get down here, you'll put your We'll be going back the way we just came. We'll get that B3 ration again, so it's respawned back in the crawl space. Because there's been like a loading screen. Transition, yeah, that would have respawned, so you can grab it again on the way past. Like I say, we've used the B2 ration we need, but now you're gonna need um three B1 rations for later and one B3 ration. There's actually a spot later on just before it where you can get a B1 ration quite easy. Um, but B3 ration, you probably do want to keep one of them just in case. I can't remember where we get the next one. Nearer, you know, nearer where we need them for. Um, but I know there's a spot to get the B1 rations really easy just before where we need them. So that's not really a problem. It's just the um, B3. I can't quite remember where the first, the, the one nearest to the part we need them is. So yeah, come this elevator. And you want to go down to B1. We'll be back in here, just outside near the sewers. Come down the steps, go left. Now try to keep on the bottom, otherwise you're going to have to go past these mines. It's not a big problem, it'll just do a bit of damage to you. But you want to try and take the bottom path there, and then we'll go back down to this deep part, and then go down nine times in the deep water. And then go right. Again, we're going to take that top path. I know it's annoying you have to retrace your steps a lot, which is, it's the only way to um, reach a lot of these different paths. I'd say there's probably not many shortcuts in the game. Not in this one anyway, you'll, you'll find you'll be going back on yourself quite a bit. And this is supposedly the optimal way to do it. Yeah, so open this door with card four. And then go in this elevator. Yeah, you want to take this up to floor two, I believe. Yeah, so floor two, guys. And then it's the elevator on the right. And you want to take this one up to floor three. Uh, sorry, floor four. Yes, yeah, so punch a button twice. Right, it's so the left door, that'll be card four. Yeah, you might get seen here, don't worry if you do. Yeah, top exit times two. Left exit at the top here. Bottom left exit. Come all the way down and then take that door at the bottom. Yeah, that'll be card one. And the card, the door at the bottom. That'll be card four. Now, this dark room, 
Watch where I crawl. So you want card three, you come to about here and start crawling. You'll crawl beneath something. And then go to bottom left and use card three. Look at my life gauge to see sort of where I was. You use card three to open that door. And then card three to open this door. Yeah, I'm not sure if this bit's like a little bit random or something, or it depends where the guard is. But yeah, you might get spotted, but whatever. It's not really a big, a big problem. Yeah, this door is card four. Now, you want to try not to get spotted in this room, but if you do, you'll have to wait for the alert, alert status to wear off. So yeah, try not to get spotted. But if you do, you're going to have to try and hide from the enemies until it goes back to like a neutral state. Yeah, because you need to go in that door, the women's toilets. If you've been spotted, you will not be able to. And you actually have to wait for one of the guards to go inside the women's toilets. And she'll not do so if they are alerted to you. Yeah, so if you alert the guards, just wait for them all to wander off. Yeah, I wasted a minute there, so I just edited it out. Yep, and then once you've gone back to normal status, you'll see one guard in this area. That's the guard you're waiting for. You need to wait for her to go to the toilets. She's a bit shy, so she will take her time. And first of all, she'll pretend she's going to go in the men's toilets. I don't think she can decide what her gender is. Yeah, so she'll be hesitant. Do I use the men's or do I use the women's? So you can wait behind this massive plant pot. I'm not sure how high that is. If you need to crouch or you can stand up. But you can just crouch if you want to be sure. Yeah, once you go in the men's, uh, sorry, the women's toilets. You want to go inside and Gustava will be waiting for you. Have a chat with her. She got changed pretty quick. So, yeah, sorry for those of you that are hoping to walk in on her. But yeah, talk to her. She'll take you to the elevator. There's an elevator in the toilets here. Mm. Women own the elevator, I guess. But yeah, come inside and um, you want to go down. It'll take you down to basement three. Exit the elevator here. Gustavo will be following you. Yeah, take the top left exit. Top left exit again. And then the top exit. Go left here. Wait for the tank to go past and then go up. Go left. Yep, and then use this elevator. You want to take this down, uh, sorry, up to floor 01. And you'll find Dr. Madner. Have a chat with him. And then he'll tag along as well. At the back. Back in the elevator. And then ride it back down to basement 3. Right, with your buddies in tow, head right. Head right again and then open this top door with card five. Yeah, I think when you talk, when you spoke to Dr. Madner, he gave you card five. Now go up twice and then you'll get a little cutscene. And uh, while you're waiting, you're just going to sit in all this orange goo because, yeah, why not? It's sticky and you seem to be stuck. Yeah, Gustavo will just sit inside it. Yeah, so to get through a dialogue, either hold X to skip through it or just read it at your own pace. I guess good one good thing is there's no speedrun trophy. You know, I know big I know there's kind of this on the other games because you need to get a certain rank. But yeah, not in this one. This platinum's pretty easy on Metal Gear 1 and 2. Yeah, so open the elevator. And then you want to go up guys to 01.
You'll find yourselves outside on the roof, I think. I think you're near the roof somewhere or in the mountains. Yeah, random trucks is over the mines, by the way. So mine CS, yes, you might want to... Or you can't even crouch um, when you've got your friends in tow. So yeah, come up here. To avoid the mines, you might just want to go up just before. Not, you know, do not go up past a truck. And once you reach this bridge, there'll be a little cutscene. Once you get control back, you want to go up a bit. Just to progress the... Um, cutscene a bit further. Yeah, the bridge will get broken. And rather than just jump across, we're going to take a long way. Yeah, Gustava has unfortunately passed away. Yeah, Frank. But she'll give you... Yeah, she'll give you the brooch. And card six. So, yeah. So, yeah, you'll get the brooch from her and card six. Right, bottom exit. Crawl towards this truck. Remember, there's a few mines around here. Yeah, so crawl to the truck. Head inside. And get mines times 15. These will come in useful later. Yeah, so grab all them mines times 15. And then open the bottom door. With card 6. A bit of transition here. Right, go left. Basically, take the bottom left exit around the room. Right, bottom exit, and then open this door at the bottom with card four. You find yourself back outside in the sand area. Yes, yeah, so the bottom exit. Back out to the um, runway. Keep going down. All the mines will be back here now because you've um, transitioned away and it's respawned everything. So there's none yet, but I'll let you know. You want to go in this truck. And inside, guys, will be a ration, a B3 ration. You want to pick it up. And when you come down here, this is where there's going to be mines. Just be careful. They'll always be in the same place for you as they are for me. Yeah, when, the, when you hear that little audio cue, that's normally when you picked one up. Right, back in the jungle. Left top exit. Then it's left exit and the bottom exit. Bottom exit again. back in the stream it's going to go right you're going to ignore the green beret you're going to take the bottom exit with card two is it card two i think it is yeah card number two see i know that one just from memory i think that's the only card door i've memorized yeah once back in here go right a few screens and then you want to go down we're going to grab the hand glider in a second Yeah, keep coming down here. You know, I don't mind these easy ones because um, I know Metal Gear 2 and 3 are going to be quite difficult. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to enjoy the easy games while I can, the Platinums, and then we'll do the hard ones later. Yeah, grab the hand glider. You need card 6 to open them doors. Yeah, some players like, don't go in too easy. You're going to make, you know, the harder ones much harder for yourself. But when you're following a guide, it's not like that. If you're following a guide then it's going to be just as easy or as hard as the guide makes it to be. So yeah, we're going to probably do this one. We'll do Metal Gear Solid the easiest way. And then we'll do Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. Um, they're going to be a bit harder, yes. But with the guide, hopefully they shouldn't be too bad. Should hopefully reduce most difficulty. Yeah, so you go, you go left and you come into this area where the elevators are, guys. Use the elevator on the right. And you want to go up to floor 4. Remember, we've got the hand glider. So 
so you can move on now. You need to use a hand glide to get past that bridge that broken from earlier. Yeah, so you find yourself here, you're going to go left. Left exit times two. Yeah, you need key card four to open these doors, so go through there. Do I say left exit times two? No, it's left door, C4, and then top exit times two, sorry. Yeah, top exit times two, and then left. And then it's down times two. Yeah, and then it's open this door with key card one. Open the bottom door inside here with key card four in the star cream again remember crawl just to the right near where you come in crawl beneath there and then you want key card three and then go to bottom left and there'll be a door you can open just above the life bar let's get past these people that are really good at standing incredibly still use key card three to open the door so it's top exit and then this one will be key card four Go past the dining area, and you want to open. You want to enter that door on the right, guys. I almost forgot. Yes, yeah, card one, which you need for that. I do go back. Yeah, make sure you go in that door. Card one. Yeah, pick up the two rations. There'll be a B3 ration and a B2. They'll be frozen, and you want to equip the brooch. Watch your brooch in the inventory. See it? It's warping into a key. Yeah, that will, for some reason, it will mould into a key when you equip it in that area. So yeah, pick up the frozen rations that we'll be able to use them soon. Then come back outside using key card one. Down here and back in the women's toilets. Then we're going to use the elevator at the back. Yes, it's very important, guys, you stay in that freezer until the brooch will turn into a key. And then back to the elevator and ride it down to basement three. Yeah, once down here, you're going to take the top left exit times two. And then the top exit. Then it'll be left, top, and then right. And I'll take the top door, that'll be card five. Go all the way up five screens and then get in the elevator now take us down to we want to go up to floor one next floor zero one yeah once you get outside left exit times two you find yourself back out here Yeah, now you want to crawl through here because there's all mines in this sort of fenced area. You want to go in the truck on the right. You'll find B1 ration in here and plastic explosive times five. Pick them up, guys. And then once back outside, crawl again in case you um, go over any mines. Go left. Go in the truck to get 15 mines. You don't need all of these. I've just always tried to get a few extra, guys, just in case. You make a few mistakes. But remember, you can just die six times to restock all your ammo. Yeah, open that bottom door with card six once you've got the 15 mines from the truck. Once in here, take the bottom left exit times two. The right bottom exit. And then the top right exit times two. Then you want to see elevator. 
and you want to go up to floor 19. I think this is that one that used to take us to floor 30. Yeah, so it will stop on floor 19, there will be a boss fight. You want to hit the button. Now, while the elevator is in motion, you want to put four mines down. Sorry, three mines in the middle of each wall. Not directly in the middle. You want to put them just before. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to put them actually inside the wall. You should put them just before the middle of each side of the wall. So middle top, middle left, middle bottom, middle right. right. Three mines. And then once you get to floor 19, a boss fight is going to trigger four horsemen. And they're just going to jump into your mines. Kill them really, kills them really easily. Pretty good way to kill him. Yeah, look at this, idiots. So they're going to keep jumping in, try and ambush you. And um, to make sure the others jump, you might have to move away from them. They seem to jump in when you move away. Yep, yeah, so it's going to keep doing that, little pansies. They're going to jump down and then bounce back up with, you know, from the explosion damage from the mine. Yep, yeah, you'll get card seven from killing them, and you should go up a class. Right, back out the door. And then bottom exit times two. Now we've got card seven. Um, left bottom exit. Yep, then it's a top left exit times two. Right exit. And then you want to see this next elevator, which this exit will lead you to. Yeah, that elevator there, guys, and you want to go to floor 10. And then we've got to go all the way up to the top of the steps next. So, yeah, go up to floor 10. Sorry, mate. Only enough space near for one. So, it's going to punch me a few times to delete him. That's it. That would despawn him from the game. Right. Exit on floor 10. Blow up the left wall with plastic explosive, but try not to wait if there's a kid there, wait for him to get out of the way. Because I'm not quite sure what will happen if you kill him, so just wait for him to move. I said destroy that wall. And you want to take the bottom exit, that'll be card seven. That's the four horsemen drop that by the way, card seven. Right, once on the outer stairwell. You can head all the way up. To floor 20. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's far, but it takes you a long time to get up there. Yeah, so that's 11. That's 12. Yeah, see what I mean? It's going to take a long way to get up there. Uh, but just be careful on the way up. Sometimes you might see a hole open up. You know in them parts of the floor, where there's no numbering. Yeah, nothing happens where you see like a 13. Yeah, where you see the number of the next floor, nothing happens on them squares. But a square like this one, yeah, be careful. I mean, that's just a white, whatever that is. But sometimes there'll be one of them traps on the floor which you can fall down and die. And you do not want to be climbing these stairs again. Yeah, the guards follow you all the way up here. I don't know why. Whatever. But once you get to the top and um, get through the exit, they'll have to go all the way back down again. I don't even know what happens if you fall through these holes. I was thinking, does it just make you drop back down to the floor below? Or does it kill you? I don't really want to find out. Go for it if you want to. I don't want to. Yeah, 16. I think it's floor 17. I think there's some ammo there to bait you. Oh no, it's not floor, it's floor 18. Yeah, so ammo there if you want it. You should want, you won't need it though at this stage. We've still got plenty of handgun ammo left if we need it. Yeah, there we go, floor 17. Be very careful of that, guys. Hell of a way to die. I mean, if we look, it just drops you down to floor 16. Yeah, floor 18, only a few more to go. You can rest when you complete the game. We're not far away now from the end. You have to come all the way to the top here to use your hand glider. Floor 30 would have been too easy. Almost there, floor 19.
Yeah, so you want to enter that top door with card seven. And then take the right exit, go through this white laser. Try to make sure the enemies are not aggro to you at this point. If they are, you can just scare them away. I mean, not scare them away, but wait until you de-aggro them. And then we're going to come up here, guys, and there'll be a walk. You see that walkway at the top? I grab this ration first. Yeah, that ration there. Yeah, B2 ration. Yeah, you need to jump off here, but you have to use your cigarettes first. For some reason, you have to use your cigarettes and then use the hand glider. I don't know why. But yeah, it might not work if the enemies are alert to you. I'm not quite sure why. I mean, I had a bit of a trouble here to begin with. It's, it's weird how this works. It's something to do with equipping your cigarettes and then switching to your hand glider. That seems to cause it to work for some reason. I'm not sure whether it's with the um, the cigarettes will tell you what direction the wind is blowing or it, it changes direction of the wind when you smoke cigarettes and then it causes your hand glider to work. I don't quite know why it works. Uh, but it might work with the enemies after you. I didn't get a chance to try it. So I needed to try it, you know, with a bit of breathing space. So I don't know how this is working, but it seems if you transition to a different screen and then just move out of the way of where the enemies come, and I guess hide in your cardboard box, they don't see you. I guess an easy way to evade them. But yeah, but once they are gone, yeah, this walk right here, guys, like I say, it might work if the enemy's not chasing you or if they are alerted. But yeah, you want to equip your cigarettes. I don't know why it works. You equip your cigarettes, like so. And then switch your hand glider, and for some reason it works. I don't know why. But yeah, like I say, that bit's a bit finicky. Just move, just mess about with your cigarettes and your hand glider, and it should work. And your hand glide all the way down here. Across a broken bridge. And you're pretty much in the final area. Yeah, so it's quite a deal longer than the first game, this one. Not long left. I mean, we've still got a boss, the boss rush to do at the end of this. So the full length of this video, yeah, it's got two full games, Metal Gear 1 and 2. And you've also got a boss rush at the end of each one. So yeah, once you land, you're going to take the top left exit, or the left top exit. Yep, open that door with card 7. There's going to be a boss in here, a jungle man, well, jungle evil. He's quite easy, he's running a lot of grenades at him. It'll take about 8 grenades to kill him. Just wait for him to pop up, and then lob a grenade. Now, we'll be using them rations soon, which I mentioned. Like I say, it's going to be B1 rations times 3, and B3 ration times 1. Um, but if you do need to heal up at any point, you might want to use B1 rations because um, we are going to be getting two very shortly. Yeah, we're going to be getting two B1 rations very shortly. And we're going to need three soon. So I guess you could, as long as you've got one, you should be okay and one B3 ration. And you can use any of this. Yeah, so kill him, he dies pretty quick. There's actually some grenades on the left there. You know where that key card just dropped? Um, card eight. Yeah, normally there's actually some grenades hidden in the bushes there. So yeah, if you come in there and you've got low grenades, just go on the left. You probably did see my ammo suddenly jump up when I picked up the grenades. Yeah, hidden on the bottom left are some grenades. And then go up, come this X this doorway, card 8 you want. Card 8. If you trigger the enemy, there might be gas, so you might want to equip your gas mask when you get a chance. Yeah, open this door with key card 6, and then inside guys is an egg gonna pick it up yep and then come through this doorway back through that's card six and then back through here you want card eight card eight you'll be back outside take bomb exit card eight again Go through all the weeds and then back out the bottom. Card seven. Then 
then you want to go right a few times and you want to go in this truck on the right the truck on the right has a B1 ration inside gas grenade times 5 and grenade times 15 so yeah pick all them up go right guys right again and you'll go in this truck as well this truck has another B1 ration inside So yep, and when you go up guys, it's going to be a loaded screen. So if you want, you could actually just keep going up here, get a loaded screen, go back and get B1 ration from that truck and then just repeat that. If you want to farm B1 rations, that's kind of like a quick play to do it. And then what's near guys, equip the egg and then take the auto, outer path around the fence. Yeah, equip the egg and then follow the path around and grab the B1 ration. Go all the way back and you'll probably notice the egg is probably cracked by now. And then once you get here, you want to hide, you want to wait behind the wall near this laser field. The three lasers. Now what will happen, the egg will eventually hatch and there'll be an owl inside. That you'll just be holding in your inventory. And eventually it will hoot. And when it hoots, it makes this guard think it's night time for some reason. He can't tell by looking at the sky. He tells by sound. Maybe he's got night vision, maybe he's got some sort of um, thermal goggles on, I don't know, but yeah. He will not be able to tell it's night time, he'll hear the hoots and he'll think it's time to go and he'll go and turn off the laser field. And that's pretty much how you get by here. So yeah, there you go, it just hatched, did you see? That's like a massive owl inside. Just give it a little bit longer and it will hoot. It'll probably shit first and then it'll hoot after. Yep, and he'll think he's going to be late. So he, it, like I say, he can't tell what time of day it is. Yep, we'll turn off the security field. Right, now we can go through. Go up the stairs on the left. And then take the left top exit. Go up. Open, sorry, enter this door here. Well, open, same thing. Open and enter that door, card 8. I almost forgot about that. Now, hide down to the right. Wait for that tank to go back up. And then quickly run up behind it. And then Duke in here. Wait for it to go back down and then open that top door with card one. Yep, take the right exit. And then open that door just there with card eight. Right, gas chamber. If you've triggered the enemy, so you might want to equip your gas mask. This is what I mean, the speedrunners don't get his gas mask, but it comes in very useful in quite a lot of spots. Yeah, call the elevator. And you're going to jump in, guys, and you're going to go down to basement three. Yeah, anybody follows you in, just open the door and push them out or something. Yeah, so once you get outside, guys, in basement three, it's going to be a boss fight. Look at your transceiver. 140.00 you have a little message from somebody yes this guy he normally starts there he's invisible you tell where he is from his gunfire but yeah he takes about six grenades to kill him so you just come down here and just keep lobbing grenades because that's where he starts and you shouldn't move too much as long as you don't and you'll kill him with about six grenades this way we're going to need the b1 rations times three in here so once you get inside this room Equip your B1 rations and then run over this orange goo. If you do not have your B1 rations equipped, it will kill you. Very important. I don't know why. Apparently it's something to do with the chocolate. The chocolate, for some reason, dilutes the goo. I don't know how. But yeah, run over that B1 rations in your hand. And you'll dilute the goo with chocolate, I guess. And then come back outside, back over to your elevator. And then ride it back up to floor one. Now we've beat that boss and done the goo, you know where we've, we killed Jungle Evil earlier? There's actually going to be a key card there now. Right, come down, back down through this ring. Card 8 at the bottom. Yeah, in this whole area, it seems when you're inside, when you trigger the enemies, gas is released. Yeah, so once you get outside, take left exit. Down into that room, it'll be card 1 to open it. Yeah, card 1. Now, Duke in here and wait for the tank to go down and come back up. 
and then go down after it. So we've used all the B1 ration, so all we need now guys is a B3 ration for later. Yeah, come out still with card 8. Down the steps and then take its bomb exit. If you want, you can go back in the truck and get another B1 ration. Yeah, this truck just here. Yeah, you can pick it up, take the bomb, exit. Right, and then go left twice. Yep, and you can go in this truck on the right. In that truck, you'll find a B1 ration again. You'll find some gas grenades and some grenades. You'll need the grenades for Metal Gear, the Metal Gear D boss, by the way. Right. Leaf the truck and go left a few times. There will be more grenades later, but we're getting the rations anyway. Um, the grenades are literally like a step away, so most will grab them. Yeah, open this door with card 7. Right, go in the exit on the right. Yeah, take this exit on the right and then up. And then in the top right of this room here is card, card 9. Yeah, it's just in the weeds there. Card 9, yeah, make sure you just go to top right corner and you should automatically pick it up. Right, and then back down and then left. And then take the bomb exit with card 7. Not too far from the end now, guys. Very, very close to the end. Yeah, now go all the way right. Now, if you want to... You can go back in the trucks and grab the um, rations again. Yep, yeah, so you've got B1 ration, you've got grenades and gas grenades. Back outside and then go right twice. Yeah, so take these steps. You're going to go back up here. You want card 8 for this. So again, we're just going to wait for the, the um, big sort of tank bulldozer to come down. Yeah, I almost forgot again. Yeah, then once it's going back up, quickly go and duke to the right. Then open that top door with card 1 and go through to get back outside. That's it, we do not need to come back outside here after this. Yeah, so in this door, guys, card 8. Top door. If you trigger the enemies, then make sure you've got your gas mask on. Yeah, card... Well, it's not a card, it's the elevator. Yeah, call the elevator down, go inside. And go down to basement 3. Yes, yeah, so now we've got card 9, we can actually access this room, pass up them 3 patches of goo now, or 3 patches of chocolate. Right, so once you get in this door, card 9 to open it, there'll be a little cutscene with Dr. Madna. Yeah, you get a transceiver call from Holly on 140.76. Yeah, and Dr. Madner will try to bear hug you from behind. So all you want to do is just put five mines down and run into them. They'll damage you both, but they will kill him eventually. There you go. Just put some mines down, guys, and run into them. And he will die. Yep, and now you know that key we've got from the brooch. Equip that key from the brooch. That's it, and I'll unlock that door. And then equip a B3 ration. Yeah, it's very important. Equip a B3 ration. And then crawl through here. That's it, and then crawl back out. And then because you've got a B3 ration, they're now going to follow you. So you equip your handgun, and then just shoot them as you see them coming through the hole on the map. You see them on the map, on the radar. As they're coming through, just keep shooting. 
Yep, and once you kill them all, they can kill you in one hit, surprisingly. I think Snake's allergic to rats. I don't know why he's a snake. But yeah, come inside once you kill them all and grab the cartridge with the Konami logo on it. I think it's Konami. Their old logo. Yep, and then crawl back out. Go down to get back out here. And you'll find Dr. Madna. He's still got a slither of life left. Put one of the rats in his pants to finish him off. And the worst thing that could happen is going to happen. You took the bait. He tried to keep you talking and you took the bait and you fell down this trap. And you actually fall down head first as well. Making it even worse. Yeah, but load the screen will slow down your momentum, luckily. And you'll land firmly on your feet. Yeah, so once you spawn in here, you want to have card. For some reason, you need card 4 to open this door whatever but yeah come in here and you find a metal gear d in this pitch black area so to kill him guys you're gonna lob grenades at his feet i think them side rooms have ammo i've never looked inside but i assume because what happens if you come down here you've got no grenades left so yeah i assume them side rooms have ammo inside them but yeah come down here guys just keep lobbing grenades at his feet that's all you gotta do you're gonna lose all your items in a minute so you've got plenty of healing items don't be shy about using them here. You're going to lose everything. Yep, it'll take about 20 grenades. And you keep throwing them at its leg. You'll get a trophy, guys. We didn't start the fire. Yes, yeah, so like I say, you get all, all the trophies at the start of the game and at the end of the game. Yep, yeah, so its weakness, its weak point is his feet. His pinkies. And you find out after that your hair is on fire. You need to discard everything, even the rations. The rations are not burning, but you still need to get rid of them. You you will still be on your character will still be on fire outside, even if the rations are still on you. You have to get rid of everything. Right, and go down bottom exit, go left, and you'll find Grey Fox. Now a quicker way to, to kill him, you're gonna take a bit of damage doing this, but you will get full you will get full health after this fight. Yeah, punch him a few times and it'll cause him to run around and then run around beside him and you'll trigger the mines and the mines will damage him at the same time and they'll kill him quicker. That's the easy way to do it. So punch him when he runs, follow him like right beside him and then when you trigger the mines around the area, they'll kill him as well. You'll get a trophy guys, you're number one fan. He'll drop the cartridge. Yep, and you'll get your health back. And then final boss fight. This boss fight is quite long, so it's more it's more like a puzzle type thing. And you have to fight him exactly the same on boss survival. Yeah, so it's big boss. You can tell it's big boss because it's got an eye patch. Yeah, so go in the door on the left here, the top left door. You want to pick up card one, come back outside, and then go right. Pick up ration one, B1 ration. Watch you don't stand on the orange goo. Be very, very careful. Yeah, pick that B1 ration and then enter this bottom door with card one. Pick up card two. And come left, two screens. And then go in this door here with card two. Yep, crouch beneath here to find card three. This is the exact same way you have to do this on boss survival. Yeah, then equip your B1 ration and walk on that goo to cover it in chocolate. Go right one screen and then enter this door using card three. And then pick up card four inside. Then go right. Open this door with card four. Now do not walk too far forward or you're going to die. Then walk around the goo. Pick up the lighter then exit. And then you want to take the top exit here. Left. And then the bottom right exit for card. Yeah watch out for the goo. Do not run straight in there. You want card five. In this room is card 6, but you don't need it. I don't even know what that's used for, if I'm honest. Because there's no doors left except for that one at the top. And that seems to open when you kill him. So I have no idea what card 6 is for. Yeah, then when you've got card 5, like I say, you don't really need card 6. Come around here and grab the spray. Now, once you've got the spray and the lighter, equip them both. And you can go and burn him, burn him with the by igniting the spray. That's it. Just keep doing that, guys. Eventually, you'll kill him. You've got infinite ammo with this. It's an it's a infinite bottle. Bottomless bottle. 
Yeah, eventually you'll set him on fire. And we got him. He doesn't take as long to die on, on boss survival. He dies instantly. It's not over yet, he says, while burning to death on fire. I'm on fire, but it's not over yet. Yep, once you kill him, you'll get a trophy. It's over. Well, I guess it's definitely over now. Right, once you kill him, you've got to escape from the island now. Zanzibar. Right, come up here. You'll see this door is open now. To the top exit. Maybe you don't, you know, maybe you don't have to kill him. Maybe you can escape without killing him. But you get a, maybe the ending is longer. I, I don't know. Maybe it's quicker if you kill him. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Because that's the only door left which card 6 could open. Yeah, Holly will come in as you try and escape. And she'll give you a weapon with infinite ammo. No need to kill the guy, just keep going up, guys. Ignore the rations, no point, you don't need it. Yes, yeah, keep going up until you get to the elevator, call it. Then while you're waiting for it, just keep killing the enemies that spawn. Yeah, then head inside. And go up. Yeah, it's going to take you up to floor one. You'll be outside. Go right. And then just keep going up until you reach like a small clearing. Yeah, go through these two white lasers or pieces of string. Whatever they are. Spider webs. Yeah, keep going up. Enemy spiders. Now, you're just going to keep coming to the enemies as they come up. If you stand here, you can sort of just cause them to run into a line of bullets. Yeah, just keep shooting the enemies. Eventually, there'll be some dialogue. And you find out you run out of ammo. But just conveniently, the helicopter appears at the same time. You seem to run out of ammo. Yeah, there you go. And that's the ending, guys. That's it. Game completed. Yeah, Healer will come down to rescue you. Mike. Luckily, he's a very good shot as well. He's got very good accuracy. He got 100% on this. In this training. In the shooting range score. Oh, it's Charlie. And that's it, guys. The ending. So, on to boss survival next. And then we are done. So yeah, I'm just going to cut through, edit this, them endings there take about, that one takes about 20 minutes that one does. Well, well no, it's about 10 minutes, that ending. So yeah, once you get control back, you'll get a trophy guys once you reach the result screen. Free from rations, complete Metal Gear 2, 1 hour 16. Most of that time was credits. Yeah, so make sure you make a save, clear data. Like I say, if you want to replay it later, you have infinite bandana. Not like it makes a difference. The game's too easy. Yeah, so boss survival. And make sure you pick easy, guys. There'll be more rations to pick if, as long as you pick easy. Now, we're going to kill Black Ninja first. I'd advise picking up all the ammo on this one. The Metal Gear 1 boss survival is really easy. This one, if you don't pick up all the rations throughout, yeah, you can get in a bit of trouble later on. So, yeah, he's going to kill him. Just like before, when you shoot him, guys, he's going to be invincible for a few seconds. So each time you hit him, you might want to stop firing. If, if you come down the bottom here, he will sort of always stay in the middle. That's it. Once you killed him, next up will be the running man. It's the same way as before, but you want to get all the mines here because we're going to use the mines for the four horsemen boss. Uh, because this is the only place you find mines. So grab the mines, grab the plastic explosive. Grab that ration. Grab those mines. I think get 15 mines all together. Yeah, some more mines there and some plastic explosive. Okay, so just like before, we're just going to put some mines down near one of the exits. So I'm just going to put down four mines. So four mines near an exit. 
that's it and then go to the opposite rooms and you see him move and you want to keep him running between the rooms where you put the mines and he'll run into the mines you have got a gas mask by the way I almost forgot to mention that yeah when you start this fight the gas mask will be in your inventory and you can use it right so you've got the helicopter now so you have to move around to find this thing in missiles yeah, I don't think there's anything else in this area than this. Oh, you got a ration up there, at least. I should have some more stinging missiles near the landing pad. Right, so you want to equip these, and remember, it will take three shots, and you want to make it so they land just as he sort of enters the circle of target. And we got him, guys. So that's Hind D. Next one is a four horsemen. So you should have 11 mines. You want to try to put three. You have to put three on one and two on the last one. There's some grenades in here and some ammo. So yeah, put three in the middle of one wall. Three in the middle of another. And then three and then two. And then the one which is still standing, you'll just have to, well, you know, we could only put two mines down. You just have to use a grenade. It's all to finish them off. Yeah, it's just finish them off with a grenade, guys. And there we go. That's the four horsemen. Yeah, next up is Night Fright. This is the invisible guy, I think. Yeah, so the invisible guy, you want to get all the ammo here. The rations do come in useful. Yes, yeah, grab the grenades. And the ones in the previous room. Grab this ammo. Come down here, grab this grenade. Yep, grab that ammo, grab the Russian, and then grab them grenades, and then kill him, guys. Just like before, he'll take about seven grenades, and you know where he is because you'll see the bullets come in. There you go, and they just keep spamming grenades. I don't know why you don't have to. You don't have to kill Jungle Evil. I didn't even realise. Yeah, you don't have to kill Jungle Evil, do you? Yeah, so Metal Gear D next. So you got loads of grenades here. So this is where you need the rations. I mean, because look, you can, your health can go down pretty quick. So just keep spamming grenades at his feet. As long as you picked up all the rations, you should be able to just tank all the, tank all the um, bullets from this tank. Yep. And once you got him, last boss is well, we've got Grey Fox guys, and then Big Boss. Big boss, you've got to fight him exactly the same way as before. This is going to take like a minute. So Grey Fox, just like before, we're going to punch him and then run around with him. But stay beside him. And then when we trigger the mines, they'll damage him at the same time. And we'll kill him quickly. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look how low my health is. This way I need to pick up all them rations. And then the final one, Big Boss. Right, so exactly the same way as before. Go in this door first, pick up card one. Go right. Do not stand on the yellow goo. Pick up B1 ration. Pick up that B1 ration as well. Yeah, then go in this bottom door. We need card one to open it. Inside will be card two. Go left twice, and then open this door with card two. Pick up card three by crawling beneath that table, whatever it's supposed to be. Yeah, then exit, go left, go down, equip your B1 ration, and use that to cover that goo and chocolate. Go right twice, uh, sorry, once, and then go in this door with card three. Pick up card four, go right, and then go in this door with card four. Now, when you walk in, do not walk forward because you're walking the yellow goo. Just go in and then wait, go right around the goo and pick up a lighter. Then exit the room, go right, then up, then left to here. Use card four to open that door. Walk around that yellow goo carefully and then pick up card five, guys. Exit the room, go left, come down here, open this door with card five. 
pick up the spray, and we've got what we need to kill the boss. So now equip the spray, equip the lighter. See where he is on the map, he's about to come down to me. Yeah, so just keep killing him guys. Burn him with this really weird looking flame, blue and red. And then once you killed him, you'll get a trophy for completing big boss rush on um uh, sorry, boss rush survival. On Metal Gear 2, and then you'll pop platinum. Yeah, Zanzibar, land survivor. And platinum guys, grind my gears. So yep, that's all the trophies done in Metal Gear 1 and 2. I will be doing the Metal Gear Solid series, be doing all of them, I'll be doing Metal Gear 1, then 2 and then 3, be doing them in order. Metal Gear Solid will be next, but I'm going to be doing Alan Wake 2 first, guys, before I come back to the rest of the games. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.